a man named Jim Wilder, who's a PhD psychologist. And Wilder was describing some of the things that that the that the world of psychology is discovering now about attachment and, and mother need and human attachment theory and that sort of thing. And Dallas is just blown away. And and he is thinking about everything he's taught on union with God. And God is our provider. God is the source of nourishment. And he is weeping. This is this is weeks before yeah. his death. And and he says, this is the most important thing I've ever learned. That salvation is a new attachment. Salvation means a healthy new attachment to God. And from there, the assurance that you will be cared for, the assurance of abundance, the assurance that your needs will be met, that you're seen, that you're loved, uh, and all that it provides. And, and so now we're back to Matthew 6. If you're living from that place, you can make good decisions. Friends, welcome back for part two in this conversation with John Eldridge about his new book, Resilient, Restoring Your Weary Soul in These Turbulent Times. We're going to continue that conversation from last week. I encourage you, if you haven't listened or watched the last episode, go watch that one. And then this week, what we're going to be talking about is shepherding the hearts of, of our kids, our own hearts, um, how we develop the strength that prevails in these times, prepping. It's going to be good. So hope you enjoy, hope you get a lot out of this conversation with John Eldridge. Can I throw two scriptures at you and yeah. let you respond? Because there's a tension and to mix what you're in, inviting us to do, um, to put ourselves in a posture and to ask God for him to bestow on, on us something that we do not have. And in the circles that I have is, what does it look like to prepare? You know, whether it's the end of the age or not, what does it look like? Because we want to fix, we want to, we want to be ready. So the yep. two scriptures, where there is a tension here, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap mm -hmm. or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Mm. I know believers. That's their posture. I'm just going mm -hmm. to, I'm just mm -hmm. going to trust. And then we've got Proverbs 27, 12. The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. Mm -hmm. There is a, I think we tend to focus on the physical prepping uh, mm. because we can see results quicker. Uh, you know, I don't know, right? But I'm, I'm tempted into that as well as, you know, Psalm 91, take refuge under the mm. shelter of the Most High, you know? So there's, there's mm. all that. Like, what? Mm. A holistic approach to, to girding ourselves for what you mentioned could be a very different scenario six months from now. As a father, figure to all these sons right here, what's your, what's your wisdom on this? Because I, I know men mm -hmm. who say, I will not physically prepare at all. And I know others who say, who, that's all they know how to do, so that's all they're doing. But I, mm -hmm. where's the healthy, mm -hmm. how do we approach God to seek his direction in this? I mean. I've been mm -hmm. trying to do that, but I'm I'm looking yeah. for your fatherly counsel on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really good. Well, first off, what is the preparation we primarily need? Okay, you have to clarify that for yourself. What is the preparation we primarily need? Is it, you know, the reallocation of your investments? Is it burying gold in the backyard? Like, what is the, you know, is it three months of food? Uh, do what? What are we talking about, people, when we talk about preparation? Um, preparation for what? Um, so, 
I, I think we can make sense of these verses if we understand in, in the lilies of the field passage and the birds of the air. That's Matthew 6, right? Mm -hmm. That's the, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that is orientation. That is a passage about motives. Do not do things out of fear. Do not do things out of fear, like like you're on your own, like you don't have a God who cares, like don't, because he ends the whole thing by saying, but seek first the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So it, it's yeah. a passage about motives. It's a passage about priorities. It's a passage about orientation. It's not a passage about prepping. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with your outlook on life. And, and if you are gripped by fear, it will compel you to do things that have nothing to do with God. Nothing to do. You're, li you're living, he calls it like the pagans, for the pagans chase after these things. You know, he, he's like, you're living like someone who doesn't even believe in God um, because of your orientation and your motives. You're living out of fear. Okay, so he, he's trying to get that off the table. Say so that's not a good place to be living from. Okay, so that's that passage. Um, the Proverbs passage is is about planning, because Proverbs is a book of wisdom. Um, but planning for what? Now we can go to planning for what? Mm -hmm. You know, um, it it's so the point that the point. I, I, I'm stumbling for the right way to explain this so there's fear and motivation and orientation there's planning but planning towards what um what is the greatest need of the human soul right now and particularly the friends of god what is the greatest need the greatest need is for an experience of union with the living god that provides you with supernatural strength that's the greatest need because if you go get three months of food or you go reallocate all of your you know you, you put everything in bonds or whatever it is you feel like is the right plan <clears throat> and you don't have that union with god you've missed the epicenter of the fight that's the fight it's not about the economy it's not the, the mm -hmm. ancient battle of the world is over the human heart and and the prize is the human heart that is what the kingdom of god and the kingdom of darkness are fighting over, fighting over people's souls and i don't mean just in terms of salvation i mean that that whether or not their souls are flourishing in god or withering uh, under the pressures of the world okay so planning towards what planning for what <laughs> like what do you think is is the urgent need and and i'm trying to make a case that i'm getting texts and emails from mature believers i'm having conversations with my own staff who are telling me i i I might be done with this whole God thing. I, I don't know, man. Like, I, I just want relief. Mm -hmm. I, I, just, I just want people to leave me alone. I just want to go live my life. I, um, so let me describe the scenario I just got out of. Yeah. So Luke's graduation present took him to the South Fork of the Snake River in Idaho. And we floated the South Fork for three days killer fly fishing i mean it's gorgeous it's canyons and it's the high rocky mountain west and it's you know there's a moose swimming the river and you know it's phenomenal we're catching these giant trout and we're having a ball and then you get back to the lodge at night you know and here are all the guides out on the deck and here are people enjoying themselves and drinking beers and having brats and it, i tell you what life looks really good and there's something in the human soul that says, this is all I need. Like, if I can just get a little more of this, I'm good. Mm -hmm. 
and I felt so terrible for the people who were most caught up in it, you know, people who don't know God and, and we're just in that scene. That scene is very attractive, particularly in June. <laughs> but that scene, you can't build a life on that. Like that does not make a life. Those mm -hmm. people are all going to go away. They're not your friends. The, the river's going to freeze this winter. You know, it, that, all that's going to go away. And you are still left with your soul and the condition of your soul. So the case that Jay and I are trying to make in this conversation is that prepping for what? Well, what is the most urgent need? The most urgent need is a deep and profound union with God from which you are receiving on a daily basis genuine nourishment, genuine strength for the hour. You are receiving catascuo. Now, from there, you can make really good other plants. Like you, yeah, but it doesn't matter what other plants you make if you don't make that one. Yeah. So, because this is just such a big topic among so many people, and of course, now it's kind of getting out on the news, you know, energy and gasoline and food and baby formula and all these things toilet paper we've been through that you know there is a place for prepping but to be in union with god over it so that it's not done out of fear and you know i i think as i as i've read about herod herod had stockpiles of stuff that he never used you know just because it was fear and and he wanted to be that guy that had more than everybody else and that made him feel secure to be bigger and stronger than everybody else and i mean herod was mm. just fabulously wealthy and you know considering jesus walking past his castles and you know what a contrast there you know and so much could be said about just telling the story of that comparison between two two kings You've got Joseph, you've got Noah, who did what they did out of union with God because right. they were righteous. You know, Joseph, I think yeah. I said, I said Joseph and Noah, and then you've yeah. got others who don't. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, I, I think we're all called still, we have a calling and there's, there are unique assignments for each of us in this hour, but we don't know them and we can't feel confident in them until we are in union with God. And... I don't know what chapter it is. It's chapter five, I think, in here. Mm. Holy smoke! It. Um, I was so glad that you you included this in here. Really, it's a. It's just about that union with God. It's about connection with God and how salvation is actually Attachment. intended. Yes. So, could you, in this hour with all that's going on, it's so easy to focus on the bad and the difficult and everything, but there's no way that any enemy of God's is going to destroy more than God's offering in this hour. And, and so let's shift our, our gaze to what is the incredible gift that's being offered that maybe wouldn't, we wouldn't even know that we needed so desperately were it not for the hour that we're in. And in particular, yes, yes. connection. Yes, attachment. Attachment. Um, because in times of high stress, it 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 triggers you. This everybody's triggered, okay? Yeah. Um, and what they're triggered to do is hoard, or grasp, or fear, or you know, do yeah, compulsive things. Um. But if, if down in the core of your being, you have the assurance of abundance, it, your perspective on how to live in this hour will be very, very different. Um, because again, folks, I just, all you have to do is just do the math on this. Like how much can you actually stockpile? Okay, mm -hmm. just run that out. Yeah. Do, go, look at your bank account. Go look at your current balance in your checking account, okay? And ask yourself, how much can I stockpile of whatever it is you think you need? 
you need guns and ammo. No, you need gasoline or diesel. You need baby formula. You know, well, just run that out. Do the math, and then get it all done, and then ask yourself, and how long will that last? And then go, and what happens then? <laughs> like mm -hmm. that, that, that is not going to last very long, even among the wealthiest. Uh, at least of those of us who are listening to this podcast, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I could, I could put away, you know, I could put away maybe a year. I could, I could maybe put away a year of, of food and fuel and stuff, but you just go. And then what? At the end of that year, what? <laughs> You're missing the point here. It, you're still going to need God at the end of that year. You're in the same exact position you are in now. Okay, only you blew all your savings on. Mm -hmm. And maybe that wasn't what you were supposed to do with that. So mm -hmm. that's just a little footnote. Do the mm -hmm. math. Um, but the chapter five is is making the point that times like this, that, so now we're moving into some of my therapy background, been, been a Christian counselor for 30 years, um, some of my training in this. Um, the deep, if you've been around, you know, Jay's ministry or mine for very long, you've heard us talk quite a bit about the father wound and the, and the need for the healing of the father wound and that sort of thing. But actually the deepest connection a human being experiences early in life in your in your first months in the womb your first days after birth is with mother and and mother teaches you the assurance of abundance you will you will be fed you will be clothed you 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 will be comforted you will be held, you will be looked at, you will be adored, that these needs are so primal in human beings, they, I don't want to say they're more important than, but they predate father need. Mother need predates father need in human development, because it's, mother is your first attachment. You are attached to her literally in the womb. You are literally receiving everything you, you, you need for life through the umbilical cord. And then in the moments afterwards, I mean, hopefully if it was a non-traumatic birth, it took place immediately. But eventually you're brought into her, you're laid on her chest, you know, and the beating of her heart and, and the smell of mm -hmm. her allows you to calm down and to realize I'm going to be okay in the world. My needs will be met. And over the course of the next days and months, you experience attachment, healthy attachment. I am loved. I am secure. I'm going to be okay. If that foundation does not get laid in a person's life, then when they go through something like we've all just been through of globe, we just call it global upset. If you don't want to call it trauma, just global upset, then you are going to be profoundly shaken because in the core of your being, you do not have the certainty that you will be cared for. You, you, you are not properly attached and properly provided for. So, the stunning thing is this, and I tell a very, very dear story about Dallas Willard. Dallas Willard was three years old. His mother died. And he adored her. He absolutely adored her. It, it was a terrible, unnecessary, it was an accident. And then, uh, it, you know, it was back in the days of farm town doctors, and he botched a surgery, and she never recovered. She died in the hospital. He never saw her again this little three-year-old boy tries to climb into her casket at the funeral. And just that image of the primal need for mother, the primal need for attachment, and what that, any sort of deprivation there, including total loss, which is what happened to Dallas, total loss, 
is just an earthquake to the human soul. So he he grows up, he goes on to become, you know, one of the most influential intellectual figures of the 20th century, chairman of the Department of Philosophy at the University of Southern California, brilliant guy, but probably one of the most spiritually influential. He's a C.S. Lewis type influential guy. Um, the end of his life, He's talking to uh, a man named Jim Wilder, who's a PhD psychologist. And Wilder was describing some of the things that that the that the world of psychology is discovering now about attachment and, and mother need and human attachment theory and that sort of thing. And Dallas is just blown away. And and he is thinking about everything he's taught on union with God. And God is our provider. God is the source of nourishment. And he is weeping. This is this is weeks before yeah. his death. And and he says, this is the most important thing I've ever learned. That salvation is a new attachment. Salvation means a healthy new attachment to God. And from there, the assurance that you will be cared for, the assurance of abundance, the assurance that your needs will be met, that you're seen, that you're loved, uh, and all that it provides. And, and so now we're back to Matthew 6. If you're living from that place, you can make good decisions. If you're not living from that place, you are going to be in panic or anxiety, or anger, or rage, you, you are going to find yourself hating your political opponents. You're going to find yourself wanting to run people off the road, stockpile ammunition, you're, you, because, because those things are not born, you're not, you're not living out of a deep, deep attachment, security to God. You're living out of fear anger and 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 oh no what's next we better prepare for what's next and that's what jesus is trying to address so the reason i put this chapter in the book it seems like a strange place for mother attachment theory to be in there but it's not no it's not it not because this and, and, and so here's the good news god is offering that you know all the healing that we've talked about in terms of father healing also takes place in mother healing the the needs and the attention of the things that we did not receive because we live in a broken world no matter how great your mom was those things can still be met you can live from a very deep place of security and from there yes Make good plans. May absolutely walk with Jesus. Ask him what he wants you to do. But you're it's not subtly being motivated from insecurity and uncertainty. So if if we find ourselves in this hour and we have I mean the the idea to live out of our identity as sons, it sounds amazing. I mean, I get to have dad uh, I get to call God dad. Yeah. Um, and then it, you know, I've been in this journey for years learning mm. to be a son. And mm. yeah, like when, when I think of Jesus in the desert right after he got, you know, told how much he was loved and how proud God was of him, mm. he goes off into mm. the desert as a part of his initiation. Mm. And I mm. feel like mm. I just asked Jesus uh, one day, I said, why those three? Why those three temptations, the bread, mm. the protect, the, you know, throwing himself off of, you know, mm. a tower and then worship me and I'll give you what you came to get, which is power. Mm. And the Lord just really simply said to me, it's because those are the three, those are the three great fears of the orphan. It's um, protection, provision, mm. and that you have to come up with a plan for your life. And so what I find myself doing is praying, okay, what would it look like to be the son of a perfect father and, and a perfect mother 
in terms of in the area of protection. What do I feel that I need to be protected from? And then inviting mm -hmm. God to address that mm -hmm. and provision. Uh, mm -hmm. And OK, there's a plan. Who can plan anything even six months out, you know, these days? Um, but those three categories have been super helpful to me. And the mother part, I've been hearing Morgan talk about this for years, and it just kind of, it, it would hit me long enough to, to actually make me mad or to, yeah. uh, to, you know, to make me cry. But I'm like, this is too painful. This is too painful mm -hmm. right now. So I guess my question for you, John, and, and I think this is actually a great segue for you to talk a little bit about um, 30 days to resilient because I'm on day five and it's, it's, it's good. I think it's going to take longer than 30 days, but with the pause, out, do it all of that, of course, you know, you just do it again. Right. But yeah, I mean, I would just think if I haven't gotten that attachment by now, if I'm, if this is being exposed in me, one, there's the shame that as a Christian for maybe decades, I should be beyond this by now. Yes. Um, and two is, is it too late? And how long will it take to develop that type of attachment to God? The one where I'm not fearful anymore. Mm. God's bringing all this stuff to the, to the surface. He keeps, I, I visited a, a tank on a ranch recently, multiple times over the last year. And as the, as the water drains out, you know, and water is life. And as the water drains out, and as I'm mourning the fact that there's less and less water, I'm actually able to see far more clearly what's in there. I can see all the pond life in it. And he was just like, Jay, this is what I'm doing in you. I'm draining what's not necessary so that you can see what's inside so that we can deal with that. You need to protect the life that's inside. So when the tank is filled up again, mm. you're good. But John, how do we mm. do this? I want to be mm. more attached. And yet attachment to God brings up fears. Mm. Uh, it brings up a lot of things. And, and friends, you know, sons, you listening to this, I want to take this journey with you. I want us to take this together because I think this is the heart. This is the, probably the most important thing to me as I read this book, that resilience comes from knowing that I'm loved. And if that question's still out there on the table, um, you're going to get a lot of voices telling you a lot of different things. So, John, how do we hear the proper voice? Mm -hmm. answer that question so that we can build that resilience mm -hmm. and that attachment in mm -hmm. in the shortest period of time we can. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> You've got a week to heal me. <laughs> yeah, can okay, we get this done? <laughs> um, let, me, let me make an observation before I answer your question. Um, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Paul prays this beautiful prayer. He says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through may your whole spirit soul and body be kept blameless for the coming of jesus i i think that god is fulfilling that promise right now in his people but but to be on the receiving side of it is a little unsettling because it feels like the tank going down and now you're seeing all this, you know, the pond life in there and the critters and, you know, the things in your soul that you're like, God, Zooks, I thought I was past this. I, mm -hmm. why, you know, why, am, why do I want to masturbate right now? Why do I want to drink the whole case of beer? Why do I want to have an affair with my neighbor's wife? Like, I thought I was past this stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, no, deeper things are going on. Right. Yeah, I think I this is just a side observation. I think he's up to that in the world. I think that God is keeping his promise to his sons and daughters that that we are truly wholehearted and truly his. And it was interesting because when the pandemic was first, you know, rocking the earth back in the spring of 20, uh, I was praying about it and and God said, I am exposing I am exposing, what did he say? Was it hidden agendas? I am, I am it was divided allegiances. Mm -hmm. He said, I am exposing everyone's divided allegiances. Because he just looked, where, what were you doing in the spring of 20, folks? Where were you going for comfort? 
where were you going for security? <laughs> it's like, you know, it was God and, you know, God and alcohol, God and Netflix, God and porn, God and, you know, it was, it was very revealing. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyhow, I think he is fulfilling that first Thessalonians promise. You asked me, what do we do? I, I need to come back to something you said, because it's, it's not, it is not primarily knowledge. Your soul is incomplete without God. To be saved, salvation as described in scripture, is to be inhabited by God. To, to be permeated. You're the sponge, he's the water. It, it, salvation is so much more than assurance of love or forgiveness or even provision, as we've been talking about. And so I just want to clarify for a moment what the goal is. The, the goal is not better thinking. <laughs> mm -hmm. and that's insufficient. Um, to be saved is to come into a integrated reality with God. Your being and God's being becoming one. And then you find, you're like, well, I haven't masturbated for three months. I haven't even thought about it, right? It's it, because it, it's not about like discipline anymore, or it's not, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to, linger over that beautiful woman in front of me at the grocery store, you know, you go, yeah, it's not an issue anymore mm -hmm. because not because you have really gutted it out, but because your humanity in all of its places, your emotions, your sexuality, yes, your thinking is inhabited by God. I, I needed to clarify that because then, then if you know, oh, well, that's what, that's what I need. That's what he's offering then how do I cultivate that? Mm -hmm. And that's the question of the hour. That's why I wrote Resilient. That's why we produced this thing on the Pause app, which we'll explain real quickly right now. So before the pandemic, we released an app called the Pause app. And it's free. It's this beautiful, simple program that leads you twice a day through um, sort of centering prayer. I'm just releasing everything that has you all spun up, bringing you back to Jesus, beautiful music in the background, and just simple prayers That's of awesome. union with, with Christ. I love yeah, it so it's much. so helpful. Gosh, I do, too. I know. I know. Mm. I know. I know it's my voice on it, but I use it every day. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> because it works. It yeah. works. Be because it helps us toward the goal. And the goal is not information. The goal is union. Well, we just released a new feature on there that is so phenomenal. And and what's fun, Jay, is you're five days into it. What way will you get to like day sixteen? I mean, it's just gonna blow your mind. So it's a it's a 30 day morning and evening, call it a meditation, mm -hmm. call it call it a prayerful experience. It's beauty, it's music, it's prayer. And yes, it's it's some teaching, it's some orientation, it's kind of reframing things. But the goal of it, there's six five-day modules um, that take you into the very thing we're looking for, which is that my humanity is inhabited by the presence of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all, all, all that I need. And it's, it's really gorgeous. It's about 10, they're about 10 minute sessions in the morning and the evening, but they go like that. You just can't yeah. believe they're over because they're so refreshing. And uh, I mentioned that the uh, June 20th and 27th podcasts uh, on the Wild at Heart podcast where I'm talking to my staff, Jamie, who is my personal assistant, who is like a really awesome young gal i mean she's young to me she's you know got you know teenage children but she's young to me um 
mature, practices soul care, lives reasonably, isn't blowing her life up. She admits, she's like, oh my gosh. She's like, you guys released this thing called 30 Days to Resilient. I'm just like, no thanks, too much. I don't, I don't have time. It sounds like work. And that's that apathy creep thing I was describing. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And that's, that's the first thing that I wanted to say when you began describing it is it's not work. It's not. It's, it's not rescue. work. You're not going to get on and be asked to do a bunch of st stuff or even to memorize. It's just to be in the presence of and to receive. Yeah. Now, granted, the, the, you do invite us to take some risks by asking God things. And for many people, yeah. that's a scary thing, right? But hey, yeah. Yeah. that's what we need to work through for, for you. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. awesome. Jamie gets one day into it, one session. One morning session, she finally does it. And she's like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's so life-giving. You know, so that's that apathy creep. That's that, mm -hmm. you know, getting to the point where something as simple as this sounds like too much so that the enemy can have the epicenter. He can, he can, he can get us prepping in ways that have nothing to do with our union with God, nothing at all to do mm -hmm. with that. It, it, and then you run out. You're, you've, you've burned through all your reserves, and, and now you, you know, you've got six months of food and 10,000 rounds of 9 millimeter, but you are utterly gone. You're wiped out. You, you don't even believe in God anymore. On the first day of the app, as I prayed, I said, Lord, what are you saying to my heart? Mm. And that was, it was an opportunity to bring, you know, the fears and, you know, the things that I like to hide in the different corners. Mm. Just, you know, let's, let's pull them all up to the table here and let's, let's give God an inventory of, of all of my vulnerabilities. And he said, you know what, all this... It starts with coming home. If you're home, you're going to be provided for. If you're home, mm. you're going to be protected. If you're home, you're going to know the plan. Your mm. job is to come home and stay home. So to mm. me, the whole, the, whatever happens in this 30 days, it's now framed by come home. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful invitation for a son. So mm -hmm. I'm really... Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to. Yeah, that's really good. Experiencing that's it every really morning good. and every night, it's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, I'm doing it, and yeah. and and I wrote it and recorded it. You know, it's not only me. It's we've got these beautiful five international voices. It's just yeah, it's really rich. And yeah, yeah, they're 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 great. Especially, well, I like all their voices, but the the woman's accent on the very first day. Oh. Oh, Just, oh my gosh, love it. <laughs> love so it. So precious. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, John, thank you so much. Thank you for the book. Um, uh, for those of you um, out there listening, I'm so glad that you got to join John Eldridge and I. John's got some phenomenal books. I mean, other great books to re to read at this time would be Walking with God, Fathered by God, Wild at Heart. I mean, all of his resources are things that in our household um, we lean into, we refer to, and uh, it's been phenomenal for me to be passing these resources on. My my 18-year-old daughter just uh, mm. finished Beautiful Outlaw. She's not a big uh -huh. reader, but she made it through that, and and uh, yeah. it, it, I, I'm just so thankful that she got to see that playful, disruptive side of Jesus that, you know, the religious... Uh, culture often doesn't expose us to, but what a rescue to know that that's who we're following in this hour. That's who's speaking through mm -hmm. Matthew 24 and Luke 21. That's yes. the guy. It changes yes. so much. The tone, the love, it's an invitation, yes. you know. Yeah. Um, so friends, uh, sons, brothers, thank you for joining us, and let's do this together. Whatever it is, whatever it is that's ahead, I'm reminded of Maximus's, you know, 
if we stick together, we got a better chance of making it through yeah. this. And if we stick to Jesus, yeah. our chances are 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be just fine, just yeah. fine. And it's an opportunity to welcome the disruption of mm. Jesus so that we can become who we were made to. I mean, this is really yeah. about the invitation for us to become who we've always wanted to be and who's, who we still want to be. Sometimes, yeah, we lose sight of that. And of course, the enemy... He's up to a lot of no good um, these days, trying to help us, trying to make us forget who we are and what we want and what our dreams are, but we, um, we're going to get there. We're going to get there together. So, John, thank you for fathering us. I bless God for what he has given you to do, for who he has made you, and I know that he's still in process with you, crafting you. Um, yeah. Hoping, hoping you're going to write some children's books one day. We can right? use some more good children's <laughs> books. <laughs> so, Thanks, friends, Jay. yeah, any, any last thoughts or encouragements for us, John? Yeah. Um, gang, I don't want you to hear Jay and I sort of covertly with, with veiled, guarded comments secretly saying, hey, everybody, you know, the whole thing's going to blow up in three months. That's not what we're saying. Mm -hmm. Not not at all. It really isn't. If you if you read Jesus' teaching on his return, the element of surprise is absolutely essential. He repeats it over and over again. Look, everybody's going to be surprised. So you can't have, like, all these obvious signs going on and people be surprised. You can't have, <laughs> like, global chaos and, you know, yeah, it's... It's not going to be like that, people. It's, um, that's not what we're saying. That's not, we're not making these veiled insinuations to, hey, in six months, the whole freaking economy is going to get collapsed. Nope. I just need to clarify that. What we are saying is the draining of the human soul is already taking place. We are in it now. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? That is what we're saying. I thank you for clarifying that. That was an important <laughs> clarification. It was. <laughs> Can I ask you one last quick question? Just let you get, yeah. give a 30-second answer. What do we do with our dreams these days? Mm. Um, well, you, cer you certainly invite Jesus into them. Please come into this, Jesus. Please help me interpret this. Um, what's the expression of this right now? Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. Um, you neither chase them without consulting him, mm -hmm. nor do you abandon them. Yes. Um, you, you, no. Um, but but again, gang, I you, <laughs> most people have no real concept that the reality that we currently enjoy is going to be fixed, <laughs> and 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 we get to live in it fixed we get completely fixed and the universe gets fixed so that your dreams are, are not in jeopardy there's mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like yeah it's that there's no it's the whole bucket list mentality yes. yeah it's, that that's that's driving a lot of mature people right now is i, I i've, I've got to you don't understand. I still need to start that business or I still need to go back and get my PhD and because they feel like the clock is ticking. Mm -hmm. Maybe even through things that we said today, it's like, oh, no, see, there they are that, you know, talking about Jesus coming back. And so the clock's ticking and I've, I've you know, we've got to get this stuff. I've got to get married. We've got to have children. I go, whoa, 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 folks. <laughs> like the the world that you live in and the person that you are are going to be fixed not obliterated you don't move to some new reality okay jesus on easter morning is the forerunner same guy same tone of voice same sense of humor same body for heaven's sakes only fixed <laughs> right mm -hmm. and able to do pretty impressive things you know uh, but it, there it is. So it's it's that that's just so important with the dream chasing thing because, or dream holding, or dream curating, or any of that because there's mm -hmm. just this 
what I'm feeling, Jay, for my friends and even for my precious sons who are in their 30s, is I, everybody feels like the clock is ticking on their dreams. And, and it, it causes you, that does, that does not feel good. That doesn't. It feels horrible. And I'm here to tell you the clock doesn't exist. Okay. I'm going to have to chew on that. <laughs> I know. It's a big one. Yeah. There's no clock. Yeah. No, that and thing's ticking. I'm, I'm really, I'm thankful that you've been so generous with your time. But I'm, I'm also thankful that I asked that question because I got an 18 and a 19 year old. And I, you know, <laughs> I know, Lord, Father, Father me. How I do know. I, how do I help them hold their dreams mm -hmm. and be excited mm -hmm. about life and living in union with God? Yes. That, that's a precarious, can be a precarious it is a precarious scenario it's it's, I'm, it's okay, difficult to okay. i'm through. really glad i'm really glad you asked about age groups because it completely okay. varies for age groups right. i think your posture towards your kids of 18 and 19 are where do you want to go to school what what career do you want to have where do you want to live in the world i i think i think at that age you it you encourage them let's ask jesus about your dreams hmm. My son just graduated w with an MFA in poetry. Now, well, <laughs> yeah, we could have an honest conversation about that. That took, a, <laughs> that took a great deal of maturity on my part to father him through that. But I bless his dreams. Yeah. I bless his dreams. Uh, he's, he's only 28, for heaven's sakes. This is, it, you know, you, you don't ask of him to have the perspective of a 62 year old that that's not kind that's not helpful what do you do with an 18 year old in their dreams you dream mm -hmm. you, you invite jesus in you you live like there's no ticking clock john thank you so much uh friends go pick up this book it's on amazon it's been out for about a week now like i said i'm i'm almost my second pass through it and it's a rescue it's a rescue. I'm going to be sharing these passages with, you know, from this book selectively with the different members of my family because the issues addressed in it are popping up just boom, 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 all over the, all over the place. So it, it's, um, it's going to be a tremendous resource and go get the one minute pause app. And then, um, you're going to be able to have 30 days uh, to resilient, which I'm leaning into and just absolutely loving it. So Always a joy to talk to you, John. Thank you for your wisdom yeah, and for thanks, your strength Jay. and Thank for you. pouring into us. All yeah, right, friends. Love it.